Well, either way, I'll have it and we'll work it yeah, out. We'll work it out later. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Hello. Good evening. Um, welcome. Welcome. For my new members that don't me know me, my name is Margaret and I'm here tonight with a friend of mine named Leanne. Hi, Leanne. Hello, everybody. We've obviously been chit-chatting ahead of time. Um, <laughs> yeah. We do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I wanted to bring Leanne in tonight because just a couple weeks ago, I um, actually got a guide that Leanne wrote and it made me realize that I was kind of omitting this huge part of, uh, I, I guess, who I am as a horseman now <laughs> because it's, you know, uh, some things that I have been working on throughout my life, just in general, just mm -hmm. conscious language and, and being aware of how I speak um, and in being aware of my emotions and, and things like that. That's all part of my life that what I realize now is a big reason for the change that I had in my perspective of how I work with horses and um, not just how, but what I expect of them, I guess, is expectations has become a really big thing or yes. a lack of them. Yes. So Leanne, why don't you share a little bit about yourself and your journey? That'll help. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, I I grew up with horses. I can't remember a time where we didn't own a horse. Um, and so that's kind of always been a part of me and everything. Um, but what really started to change me and my focus was after I had my girls, I found not that I've had that whole case of lost identity or whatever, but I just I kind of lost myself in motherhood, honestly, and it was it was really hard to step back into horses and get back into horses after, you know, you're taking care of babies all the time and and then you want to get a babysitter and all this other kind of and so it's that whole schmoz of trying to deal with babies and horses. It, it's hard. It's really hard. And and then with all of that, we have at the time we had a young horse and he scared the bejesus out of me you know like normally like before i had my babies i would not get intimidated by a horse if i was like 90 percent sure i was gonna get bucked off i got on anyway like it wasn't a thing for me i'm just like yeah so you buck up bucked off you get back on again whatever and because that's how i grew up right i grew up falling off of horses that was that's just how we learned how to ride crazy ponies and all this other stuff but I lost all that confidence because all of a sudden, you know, then I'm thinking, well, if I get bucked off, what happens if I actually get hurt? I got two babies. I can't be getting a broken leg and even just not being familiar with who I was anymore. And just so much changes when you become a mom. And so I ended up having to send this young horse away for training because I knew he was way beyond the scope of my abilities. We fought tooth and nail. He tried to buck me off once or twice. And I was just like, okay, this is just not worth it anymore. I was too scared, too chicken, whatever you want to call it. I sent him away to a trainer. And so when he was gone, then I'm like, okay, obviously my methods, which were more so the typical, it's my way or the highway, and you're gonna do what I say, and I'm the boss, and I don't care what your objections are. You know, if I'm not asking you to walk through fire, you should just listen, right? And that wasn't obviously working for him at all. And so I went looking for different training methods all over the internet. But what I found <laughs> was how much was wrong with me, <laughs> which was really funny because that was the gateway to everything. I realized that there was really nothing wrong with my horse. Like, yeah, sure. He's got some challenges and all that kind of stuff, but it was my mindset. It was how I was letting even like, not even stretching the truth here, memories from when I was like six years old, completely misunderstanding situation between my parents. I took it to heart and the feelings wrapped around, you know, being responsible for other people's emotions and all this other kind of stuff, carrying that and all that negativity and all that 
energy of those memories inside of me were literally affecting my relationship with my horse. And that was starting to blow me out of the water. So I'm just like, how, you know, like it just, it didn't make sense. It, and so then I was just like, okay, let's start going down this little rabbit hole. And it was just amazing what I found out. And like even simple things of, well, I guess it wasn't really simple, but um, I was abused in an abusive relationship with a boyfriend when I was 16. And, you know, and I thought I would moved on, you know, you, you know, you, you think you get through all that kind of stuff. And, and, you know, I'd even talk to counselors and therapists about it, but I realized there was still so much anger inside of me revolving around that, you know, feeling like I had lost my power. And so every time I feel powerless with my horse, I would react. I would lose my temper. I would get defensive. I would get reactive. And it all stemmed back from that trauma when I was 16. And so when I finally started to realize that I'm actually storing all these negative emotions and memories literally in my brain and in my body, that until I could actually start to release them and heal from them, and change my inner dialogue of how I thought and spoke, like literally rewire my brain, then I wasn't actually going to be a changed person. And I wasn't going to be the leader that my horse needed him to be, or needed me to be, I mean. And, and that's what changed everything. It wasn't until that I changed that my horse started to change because all of a sudden I'm actually presenting myself to my horse in a way that he's like, oh, this isn't just about you anymore. You care about what I think and what I feel and, and my objections and my fears and my anxieties. And, you know, and it just really switched everything around. And that was the biggest starting point, changing whatever you want to call it for me. And, and that's why I wanted to write the guide because I feel a lot of, a lot of us, deal with that all the time you know like to understand that our emotions are hindering the process with your horse you know and maybe a lot of people don't understand why you know like you might you might know that you have a temper or when my horse does this i shut down or someone is saying something on the sidelines when i ride and so i do this and you might not really understand the the whys and everything but you know that the the emotions are, you know, they're calling the shots. They're controlling everything. And, and so that's why I wanted to create the guide to kind of help people navigate that, right? Because it's not, it was a lot of learning to figure that stuff out. And I wanted to shorten the learning curve for everybody else. Oh, uh, well, and I know that if I was still looking for that, I would be grateful because it was, it was a big learning curve. Like it took a lot of time, not just to find the information, but that reprogramming process. Mm -hmm. It's not, you catch yourself. I mean, yes. even now, years later, I catch myself going, oh, never mind. That's not what I meant. Cancel, clear, delete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, and it's, it's interesting hearing you talk about your emotions being trapped in your body and these memories in your, in, in your head and how they are affecting your horse. And what I realized specifically reading your guide was that learning this way of thinking and this perspective and, and understanding that I have all of that to me and that I needed to heal, that's what pushed me to learn about helping horses heal and feel better and feel mm. whole. Yeah. And so when I read your guide, I instantly just like, I just, it clicked in my head. I'm like, I can see their pain yeah. because I know it as mine. Yeah. And it like, even right now, going to get a little teary because yeah. I just got chills when you said that. So I, I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and then to take, take all of that a step further, those emotions that are trapped in our bodies when we are approaching our horses, they know they're there. They're mm -hmm. more aware than we are. Yeah. And they have to deal with our stuff, but they have their own. Mm -hmm. Their emotions, their traumas, their bad experiences and bad memories are stored in their bodies and their yeah. mind 
just like ours. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so reading your guide, like brought together, like, oh my gosh, this is why I am the way I am now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like, I yeah. mean, I see a lot more heartbreaking things, mm -hmm. but I'm also empowered to be able to change those things. Yeah. You know, so. For sure. It was, yeah. Yeah. I know I was listening to um, a podcast and I can't even remember. I was listening to it when I was driving and so I couldn't write it down and who was saying it. So this isn't my idea, <laughs> but basically this, this guy, he related um, your, okay. How did, how did he say it? Your, your brain has no concept of time. Your time means nothing to your brain and what is stored in your brain. So your memories from when you were in, even in the womb to when you were being born, all of those memories are literally stored in basically, if you envision filing cabinets in your head. And so they are always there. And so you're going to have some memories that you actually remember and you like, and they're going to be in the, oh, these are the happy memories of me and my dad in this filing cabinet, happy memories with me and my mom. And this really ugly filing cabinet over there, way at the back, covered in dust, that's where I'm going to shove all the crap because I don't want to think about it. I don't want to feel it. And... And that's how it's kind of, it really helped me visualize what's going on because those memories are still there, no matter where you hide them in your brain. But the beautiful thing is, is when you actually have the tools to bring out that ugly filing cabinet, dust it off, grab a file and be like, actually have the power to go back to that memory and change it. Yeah. And I'm not saying like literally changing the past, but when you actually can heal from that and realize like, so for example, my memory when I was a six year old kid, like feeling that something that I said to my dad, I thought caused my mom and my dad to have an argument. And it's not even like it was a big argument. I just heard them disagreeing, you know, like a heated discussion. But as a six year old kid here, I'm feeling like, oh my gosh, I made my mom and dad fight because I expressed a concern and all this other kind of stuff. But then when I was finally able to realize that there's techniques to go back to that, I'm able to look at that from kind of like a bird's eye view and see the innocence of all of that, that I was six. I had nothing to do with what my mom and dad were talking about. It probably wasn't even related to what my mom and dad were talking about. And to actually really remove the power of that memory. So then all of a sudden that cabinet full of all those yucky, nasty memories that you rather would never want to think about, you can shift them and remove the power and the negativity from them so that that filing cabinet eventually becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, and it just becomes a memory, but it's not tainted in negative energy. Yeah, so, uh, so um, I didn't know we were gonna go this way tonight. This is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I just go where, you know, that's where I felt like I should go, so I just went no, with it. <laughs> it's perfect, because what, and I know, I know that I did an email emotion code session for you and it was totally to try and accommodate our time. And I feel like um, you may have gotten a little gypped because we did it via email mm -hmm. because what you're talking about right now is exactly what I do with the emotion code. Mm -hmm. So w actually through the certification, we're taught that your subconscious mind is like a supercomputer. Yeah. It logs everything it knows mm -hmm. the state of every part of your body and um you can ask and this is part of the process of emotion code is you know identifying an emotion and then mm -hmm. asking you know about how old was i when i obtained this and try and like narrow down to exactly what this was yeah and then the whole point there in narrowing it down and identifying even the emotion is to have the opportunity to take away the energy that is fueling that particular yeah. memory or emotion. It's literally mm -hmm. just to clear that energy out so that yeah. you can have a clean start so that you're not yeah. being co constantly fueled mm -hmm. by old emotions that don't serve yeah. you. Exactly. And most of the time are incorrect. 
unfortunately, yes. you know, because it's only our perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know what the other person's intentions were sometimes. Maybe sometimes you can, you know, in certain situations. But a lot of the time, you know, when we have these memories, most of our, a lot of our trauma happens when we're children. And we're children. We don't understand what's going on around us, especially when adults are involved. And, you know, and that just makes it so tricky because we're so easily to twist and think of the worst, you know, to create these negative memories and all this other kind of junk and yeah it's crazy how much we all hold on to and we have no idea oh yeah and and honestly emotions and emotional memories are really just the brink of it because there's other things that we hold on to that i mean you wouldn't even imagine like i had um and i did i discover this through muscle testing so i had a um like a broadcast message, basically like an energy that's just emanating from me and going out into mm. the universe that said, I, I will, I will not feel peace. Like just, I will not, like I refuse it. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> no, bring on the vacation vibes. I want all yeah. the peace, you know, yeah. you know, and that's not something that I would have chosen for myself. Mm -hmm. But that's one of those things where our society, our culture, the way our culture is and the way uh, our expectations or our life goes, it's like you're talking about that um, we're kids when, when a mm -hmm. lot of this stuff comes up and you just see other people doing things and you assume, you know, when you're a little kid and you're like, I just want to do the dishes. I want my own kitchen so I can do yeah. my own dishes. I want to make my own food. I want to have yeah. <laughs> No, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's the same, it's the same concept with some of these thoughts and ideas that we pick up yeah. and then carry forward. Yeah. And, and when we talk about some of the stuff that we're carrying forward and bringing it out to a 1200 pound animal, Mm -hmm. that is more aware of how you feel than you are yourself. Yeah. And then you wonder, I don't know, some days my horse is just a jerk and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Or was that the day? Are those the days? Are those some days, the days that you're overly emotional, mm -hmm. super stressed out, or just all over the place and don't even know where you're at, like mentally. Yeah. You're just like, ah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know? And I mean, don't get me wrong. I love me some horse therapy, mm -hmm. but what I have learned over the years is, is that on a day I need therapy, that is not a day I need to ride or ask anything else of my horse. Yeah. And, and that's so true. Like, I know you see those often those pictures with horses and a, and a girl and it looks all super beautiful and intimate. And they're just like, Oh, you know, my horse is there to dry all my tears. And basically uh, they're, you're, you know, using them as a doormat for your emotions. And it's just like, that's not their job. Your yes. job is to help your horse because we are the higher being and we can actually help our horse through their trauma. A horse doesn't have the ability to heal from trauma when it was a foal or a two-year-old or whatever. If they went through an accident, something tragic, they don't have that brain capacity to go back and just heal it themselves. They just know when I did this, this horrible thing happened. I don't ever want that thing to happen again. But when we're so focused, when humans are so focused on using horses to be the, you know, the sounding board for everything traumatic in your life, then you're not even giving your horse a chance to be who they are, you know, and then you wonder why your horse is either super anxious or almost depressed or shut down is because your horse has not been a ever been able to express themselves to you because you've been too busy basically crying in their mane to be like, okay, horse, what are you going through right now? You know, because, you know, it's all about, it's all about you, you know? Yes. And, and again, I'm not saying that you can't go and cry in your horse's mane when you've had a bad day. Like, no, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not their job, I don't think, um, to take care of all of our troubles and we just have to assume that they're always fine and don't need any assistance from us. Yeah, yeah, because it, it should definitely be, like, the end goal, in my mind, um, is always to have a strong connection with your horse so that you 
first of all, end goal, happy, healthy horse, right? Like you want to have a healthy horse, but you want to be able to go out and, and have a good enough connection with them that you guys can go, just go out and do something together that you both enjoy. Yeah. Like I have experienced horses that love their jobs mm -hmm. and horses that just freaking hate them, yeah. you know, and some in the middle too. But if you can't go out and just connect and go do what you love with your horse, then what are you even doing and why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. Because I yeah. feel like that's what everybody is after. That's the, like the romanticized version of owning horses. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, I just go out to the barn and I don't need a bridle or anything. I just <laughs> stand there and he lays on the ground and I get on and we go off running through the woods. It's so <laughs> magical. Yeah. Like there's something romantic about it that people are looking for to get out of that. And Yes, I think that that level of, of communication and connection is available, mm -hmm. but you're not going to get it like that. You yeah. Know? You know, like the Disney princess actually has to take care of the horse and yeah. be there for them. It's a reciprocating yeah. relationship, just like yeah. any other relationship. Mm -hmm. So like one of the things that came to me recently as I've been working on my book has been that, you know, it doesn't matter who the relationship is with. It doesn't matter if it's a relationship with your husband, your children, your horse, your best friend. Mm -hmm. they, <laughs> they're both give and take. They're all give and yeah. take. You yeah. know, it's, it's about the relationship and the quality of the relationship, not about who the relationship is with. Basically. Yes. Yeah. Because who wants to have that friend? And I'm sure we all have that friend that every time you talk to them, all they do is complain and whine about their life, oh, yes. <laughs> you know, and as much as you might love them, you, at, at some point, you're just going to start to think, okay, enough whining, do something about it, yeah. change something, heal, move on, you know, like, because it just gets old to hear that once every, you know, six or seven coffee dates isn't the end of the world, but to hear it every single time is completely different and you and, wonder, and people wonder sometimes why their horses are like screw you i'm out <laughs> well exactly and <laughs> and that is that's 110 percent it because like i follow i don't know if you follow um warwick schiller mm -hmm. um because that's one of his phrases that i really love is like um change yourself to change your horse and that's that's the first thing that he kind of teaches you and like just as a funny story my husband has got this palomino hungry is his name actually and me and him do not necessarily see eye to eye sometimes he's one of those kind of cranky type horses you know he'll you walk up to him and he'll almost just pin his ears at you like what do you want <laughs> you know? and we just have never really got along i can ride him and everything and it's fine but I've always just kind of called him like, well, it's a swear word. <laughs> so maybe I won't say it live. I don't know. But, you know, and uh, calling the donkey more or less. And, and that's just what I always kind of called him when I walked out there because he'd kind of look at me and pin his ears at me and I'd be like, whatever, and just move on and carry on to the next horse. And that's how we were for years. And and then when I finally started to realize, you know, you change yourself to change your horse before I went out to go out there one day, I just started thinking in my head, all the good things about hungry and how he's dependable and he's reliable and he's always the steady Eddie and all this other kind of stuff. And so when I went out there, instead of calling him like, Oh, Hey donkey, what's up? Um, actually, you know, I think I, I don't know, called him handsome or, you know, Hey, cutie pie or some term of endearment. And he pricked his ears, you know, he, he looked at me and he was just like, Oh, Hey, you know? And so, because I didn't show up there with that negative energy being like, okay, I hope he doesn't push other horses to try to run me over going out there to feed because that's what he would always do. And then I get mad and blah, blah, blah. And so once I finally started showing up with the energy of he's just a good horse and today is just today and we're going to just see what it is and not go out there with some preconceived notion of what is going to happen then it allowed himself the space to actually be happy 
because you know like that's the other thing i guess this might be going down another side trail <laughs> but the whole you know like can you imagine in your brain what you want your horse to do and your horse does it most people are going to say no like i'm not psychic i don't communicate with my horse like that it's not really possible but then at the same time you can um if you're i just realized my laptop is unplugged and i should make sure i don't lose battery i'm going to plug that in fast um <laughs> that we all have the ability because if you're riding your horse or working with your horse or whatever and there's a plastic bag over there and you got to go past it you're gonna be like oh my gosh there's a plastic bag in that bush and I'm going to have to ride past that plastic bag and my horse is going to freak and he's probably going to spin and do a 180 and take off and I'm probably going to fall off. And what happens if I break my arm? I'm in the middle of nowhere. No ambulances can get here. So I guess I'm probably going to have to call in for air support to come and lift me to the hospital. And you run through this whole crazy scenario of what you are dreading that your horse is, you're sure is going to do. And chances are, you're gonna ride up to that plastic bag and your horse is gonna spin and it's gonna do 180 and maybe you fall off or maybe you stay on, but something to that effect of your horse is going to spook is happening. And it's all because you communicated to your horse exactly that, you know, whereas if you can actually, you know, think about there's a plastic bag there, but not think about it in that negative sense and project that we're gonna just walk right past we're gonna be calm we're gonna be cool we're gonna be la di da and whatever and then your horse is gonna pick up on that there's nothing to worry about energy and and but it's so easy for us to just project the negative crap like my horse is an a-hole my horse is a jerk my horse is a bully my horse takes advantage of me my horse is doesn't understand anything my horse is too stupid to get this blah 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 it's so easy for us to project all this negative stuff and it works every single time we do it we because we're going out there shoving that energy in their face yep. and then <sighs> but for some reason people are always skeptical to do that in a positive way to being like no my horse and i we're jiving today we're gonna go out and we're gonna have fun we're gonna connect with each other i'm gonna listen to him he's gonna listen to me and it's gonna be a fantastic ride and like and it works it literally works and it's absolutely uh it still floors me when I, when I try really hard, if I'm like worrying about something and I want to try really hard to have good energy, it's like the thing that I was worried about always goes off without a hook. And it's just like, that was way too easy. I, that was kind of creepy that I have that much power, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, what am I like some kind of a sorceress almost, you know, you're kind of freaked out, but it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yes, I've, I've had similar experiences and actually um, mine, I mean, I just straight up label them. They're manifestations. I yeah. mean, I mean, that's what all of it is, even what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, sure. Physically manifested things too. Mm -hmm. um, but my favorite example, will always be my favorite example. Um, my daughter, uh, when she was 10, so two years ago, we're a Harry Potter family. Okay. So let's just get that out there. <laughs> um, so she got a letter in the mail and it looked like it was from Hogwarts. It had the Hogwarts seal on it. She oh. thought for sure that it was her letter to Hogwarts. When she found out it was a birthday invitation, she was pissed. <laughs> like, just almost in tears because she yeah. was just so disappointed. Um, and that was in July, towards the end of July. And I came home and I told my husband, I was like, I don't know how we're going to do it, but we are going to Universal Studios. This kid has to go to Hogwarts while the magic is still real. Like, mm -hmm. we just have to go do this. Yeah. Um, it was in order to check all the boxes and do all the things that you have to do when you go to Harry Potter land for the first time, mm -hmm. it was going to be a $4,000 trip. Yeah. And I was just like, I were, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Like, that's... Yeah that's a bit much for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So two weeks before Christmas, uh, it was December 16th. So <laughs> these are things that are like burned into my brain. Yeah. Um, I went to work, 
like a normal day. My boss says, so what are you getting your daughter for Christmas? And I said, you know, I really have no idea. This is what I really want to do. It's crazy. It's absurd. I don't know how, I mean, it's December 16th. Okay. At this point, it's just not. <laughs> he, um, went out of our office and came back with $4,000 cash and just set it on my desk and said, you earned it. Go have a great wow. time. And I was like, this is what happens when you spend five months just saying, I don't know. I don't know yeah. how, but I know it's going to. And yeah. so I think that totally applies to two horses, 100%. Yeah. I don't know how he's just going to know, but I'm telling yeah. you, my horse is just going to know. <laughs> yeah. They're just going to know. And I'm just going to know, and it's just going to be great. <laughs> I yeah. don't need to know how. I just know that it will. Mm -hmm. So awesome awesome yes it's uh and i i always know when uh it's so easy to get stuck in that cycle when something goes on between you know you and your horse like i i feel like i'm kind of going through that right now with ace where we were doing really awesome and now i'm trying to haul him to another indoor arena and it's like really boggling his mind and i feel like we're right back to square one and trying to deal with all this new stuff and it's intimidating and I, it's so easy to go down the rabbit trail of, okay, well, what am I doing wrong? What am I missing? What's what, like, what do I need to fix? What's all this, you know? And so it's like, but it's approaching it from a, a still a negative mm -hmm. perspective because it's like, obviously I'm failing some way and I need to do better. But, um, I really noticed that the last time when I worked with them is I really need to get back on, you know, because it's so easy, you know, like you can know all these things and still not do them. That's the annoying thing. It's just like going to the gym. You know, you can't expect to stay fit if you stop going to the gym and your brain is the exactly the same. And, and that's kind of something that I'm like, you know what, I need to be doing way more manifesting conscious language, all this kind of stuff around this specific issue that I have, or that, you know, this challenge, this growing learning curve, you know, even calling it a challenge or an issue is negative, right? Yeah. Because yep. challenge itself, that word is associated with something that's hard. And if it's hard, it's usually not fun. And if it's not fun, it's just plain old difficult, you know? But if I, if I even just phrase it as it's learning, we're just learning, we're growing, we're learning. Then all of a sudden you look at it from a completely different standpoint. You're not getting frustrated as much, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that it, it's definitely something where we have to revisit it over and over oh, yeah. and over and over. I mean, like I said, it's been something that I've been an active student of for five years now, and it's still something that I'm like, oh, never mind, cancel yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. um, but one of the things that I do that has made a huge difference for me is I like to call it future memory journaling. So mm -hmm. I will actually write out like it already happened, whatever yeah. it is that I'm going for. And I, mm -hmm. I usually start it with like, I'm so happy and grateful now that, and yeah. like throw in a ton of emotion words. Like I'm excited. This is great. Yeah. We're so happy. These are all the things that, so like if it was a horse situation, I'm so happy and excited now that Thorns is happy to see people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was our very cranky mayor who was never <laughs> happy to see people. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm so happy and grateful now that Jive stays trotting. We have yeah. trotters and pacers. So yeah. if they're trotters, they better trot, you know, yeah. um, and things like that. And then why, like um, what, what benefits do we get from that? Well, if she's mm -hmm. happy, if Thorns is happy to see people, I'm so happy and grateful now that Thorns is happy to be around people because yeah. now we can be happier with yeah. her. Our yeah. jobs are easier, you know, yeah. like just all those little details to it. Um, and I, I don't, it doesn't take m much time, you know, like yeah. five minutes and I get whatever it is that I'm like, this is what's going to happen. Whatever is yeah. in my mind that's going to happen, if I can put it out on paper and put some real emotion and thought into that, yeah, it makes a huge difference for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. It's, it's even funny because when I've 
even read through my own guide, it's funny because I'd be like, huh, that's a really good point, you know? And it's just, it's just really funny because I use my own guide on myself, which is funny, but I guess that means at least I feel like I did a half decent job on it because it works for me again and again and again, and I wrote it. Right. But it's, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that just like going to the gym, you practice it every day it's just going to get stronger and stronger and stronger and then if life happens you stop going you stop practicing you know you're eventually you're going to hit that spot like oh I've got five extra pounds or yeah I've been pretty negative lately time to pick it back up you know Mm -hmm. and and that's the beauty of it and why I kind of when I made the guide I wanted it to be a short and sweet version because it's only 14 pages of actual content. And so I didn't want something that people would have to sit for five days to read. You know, I wanted something that you can pick it up and in 45 minutes, you're done reading it and you can carry on and you're lifted up for the day and you can refocus and move on. You know, it's not a big thing. You could read it once a week. You could read it once a month, you know, and it's simple and it's easy and you know and then you know with all the examples in there for people who are like brand new to manifesting and all this kind of stuff i wanted to add some good examples and how to do it and how to not do it and yeah i hope uh i know i've had a couple people really enjoy it and that's an amazing feeling you know you know knowing that people um that i can serve in such a fun way because i loved writing it (laughs) yeah you know and it's still effective to me it's like almost kind of like a journal you know that I wrote that I just needed to get all this stuff out there but then I can help people with it at the same time it's just like a yeah it's super amazing yeah I I agree it is super amazing (laughs) as someone who read it I agree um and it's it's funny too because I actually had trouble getting it um yeah and it, it and I told you like that was divine timing. Whatever the technical glitch was that um, everybody can be happy to know is no longer an issue, no. <laughs> um, but it was there for me. I like really yeah. feel like it because I was not, when I read your guide, I was in the perfect headspace mm-hmm. to make the connections that I personally needed to make. Yeah. You know? Um, so yeah, no, it was, it was extremely powerful for me. And again, I'm someone who is aware of a lot of what you were talking about. I'm not new to it. And it was still powerful to me. Um, yeah. So yeah, thanks for writing that. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. I know you're, when you were sending me those messages, you're like, I'm not even halfway through. And oh my gosh. I was just like, oh yeah. <laughs> That's exactly. I'm like, wait, like, and it wasn't just like, Oh, that was good. It was like all of a sudden my head just kind of exploded. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Like I had to stop, go back, read it again. And that's when I was just like this, like I, and then almost tears because of the realization of what this work has allowed me to do. And some like, okay, didn't know why I was going to go here, but hundred percent honesty moment. There are some days that it feels like the work I do with horses is not enough or um, maybe not as powerful as Mm -hmm. if I were a human massage therapist or, you know, if I was more serving humans, Mm -hmm. I can't help it. Like, this is just how I was made. So I I must be, you know, here for, for serving the horses. But when I realized that the work that I've done on myself is allowing me to see their pain. And like, I, that's so, that's so like raw to me mm-hmm. because no one should have to live with it. Yeah. You know, no one should have to live with past traumas. No one should have to, I mean, and r- reminder, like trauma doesn't mean that you were beaten. It doesn't exactly. mean that, you know, you, we're in a tower on 9-11 or, you know, whatever. It, it's not, it doesn't have to be big. Birth is trauma <laughs> mm-hmm. because it's a dramatic change from one thing to another. 2020, yeah. call it trauma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, like yeah. every day you're just flipping a coin and that's trauma. You're not knowing what's coming next. There's uncertainty. So mm-hmm. everybody's been through it and it absolutely boggles my mind 
that there are people out there that are out of the kindness of their heart getting horses from kill, kill pens and bringing them home and then within a year they're saying i don't even know what to do with this horse and i don't understand why it won't and i'm just like hold on wait a minute yeah one year ago this horse was in a kill pen yeah what do you know about what this horse was doing before mm -hmm. that I mean, yeah. aside from the fact that the kill pen itself, y'all, it's called a kill yeah. pen. That's traumatic, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, but then all the little things, all the little things that that horse has been through in their life. And if we can just relieve some of that for them, mm -hmm. you know, but before we, I mean, these people don't even see it and they don't see yeah. it because they haven't seen it in themselves, accepted yeah. it in themselves yeah uh, and healed themselves. Exactly. And I think for a lot of people, it's a scary first step you know, to, to realize that you are the problem, <laughs> you know, like talk about a slap in the face when I was just like, Oh, so this isn't my horse's fault. This is, this is all me. Oh, okay. Then, well, I, I guess, you know, yep. and, but the funny thing was, is I was in a place, I don't know if you want to call it desperate enough looking for an answer or stubborn or the combination of the two, that I was able to re have that realization that I was the problem and do something about it right then and there. Yeah. Because I think some people that might get pointed out to them by certain people being like, eh, well, you're the one jerking on your horse's mouth. Like it's a, you know, a hand saw and you're trying to saw through a log. Um, but if they're not ready to hear that, then they're just going to be like, okay, jerk, go away. And they're just going to carry on doing what they're doing, you know? And so it's, everybody does have to be in that place where they feel, I guess, ready to do that work. And for some people it's a gentle nudge and they're going to be like, Oh, okay. I need to start working on me now. And for some people it will be something more drastic, you know, like, you know, you get in an accident because you were too, you know, over emotional and blah, 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 or whatever. And so it's, yeah, you definitely have to be in the right frame of mind to even start down this path. Yes. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, for me, I just kind of stumbled into it and, and had one of those mind blowing thoughts one day, like a realization. Um, I think for, like, so for me, the, the realization came when I learned, um, this seems really obvious, but it is... I just, I just read it. Either way, it's basically saying your reality is, is based on your perception. Mm -hmm. So your reality is in your head and my reality is in my head and they are very different realities yeah. um, because of our perception. And so with that being said, you now have to question why you believe the things you believe. And that took me, like, I'm like, so, what, like, cause you can't argue that, yeah. um, you know, like, why is it bad? Okay. This is just a general thought. Nobody, you know, nobody's like tomato me or nothing, but <laughs> um, <laughs> why is it bad to own a Ford? You know, like mm -hmm. who says it's bad to own yeah. a Ford um, yeah. or who says it's bad to eat carbs? Who says, you know what I mean? Like, take it back. Like, is that your truth? Is that someone else's truth? Because your truth mm -hmm. can be different from someone else's. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's like a huge thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the part that got me starting to dig. That's the part where yeah. I was like, holy crap, I really can choose. I mm -hmm. choose mm -hmm. what's valid in my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is crazy because I think a lot of people do that anyways, right? Like, oh, yeah. Like, we do it without realizing it, though. So having the awareness. Mm -hmm is yeah. really where the money's at, you know, the yeah. awareness that it's your choice. Yeah. I think we're making the choices. <laughs> one thing that really blew my mind out of the water kind of, um, on a similar note is that is my, my parents, my grandparents, my great, great grandparents, things that happened in their life changed their DNA, which was passed down to my grandparents, which was passed down to my parents, which was passed down to me. So literally my DNA has been affected by the trauma of my great, great, great grandparents. And so I need to give myself a lot of grace because there's a lot of stuff in my DNA that I don't even understand 
because it didn't happen to me, you know? <laughs> and so to, to really understand your, your emotions are so much more than just what you actively remember. And what's even more powerful is the fact that you can literally change your DNA by doing this work. That's the crazy stuff. Like it's been proven where they, they, you know, they take your DNA and then you go through, you know, mind rewiring, emotional healing and all this stuff. And your DNA is literally different. So you can, if you think about it, if you don't have kids yet, or even if you do, you change your DNA. So I take the initiative to heal myself. My daughter's DNA is then affected. And I'm not passing my trauma on to her. There's a reason why if your great, great grandpa was a drunk and your great grandpa was a drunk and your grandpa was a drunk, that chances are you could be a drunk because that, that is in their DNA, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's, and that's kind of a, a way to explain it that people might understand. Like this is, this is diving a little into the woo or maybe really into the woo. <laughs> I find I live in the woo now. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out I've always lived here. I just didn't know it. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's really powerful because when you finally start to kind of get it, then you can f start to feeling really empowered because then there's something you can do about it. Yes. You know, you're not just stuck there. You know, like you can, you watch those, you know, movies on Netflix where it's like, oh, my daddy was a drunk. There's nothing I can do about it. Blah, blah, blah. Well, actually, yes. Unfortunately, that has affected you 110%, but you're not stuck this way and you can change and you can get out of it on the other side with, you know, help and emotional healing and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's powerful when you start to letting that stuff in. It absolutely is. And that's actually another like tying back to the emotion code. There's, that's part of the reason why I do it because um, that's actually the first thing that drew me into it was the work on generational traumas, mm -hmm. generationally trapped emotions. Yeah. Like you're talking about, like I actually had, um, I worked with a client that had a trapped emotion. I don't remember which one it was specifically, but anxiety, frustration, hopelessness, any of those, I don't remember which one. Um, it went back 181 generations. Wow that is some serious generational trauma. Yeah. And it's, you know, and it's, it's so powerful to just stand up and say, the buck stops here. Yeah. I will not pass it down. I will not, you know, I will not allow my ancestors to continue to carry it because when you look at it from an energetic level, they still have it energetically. Your ancestors still have it because they're, spirit their energy is still out there right um yeah we're we're well into the woo now we are <laughs> all in on the woo as we look and see everybody's disappearing <laughs> from the live now <laughs> <laughs> sorry but i mean yeah generationally it goes back and those that's that's still there and we can actually clear it from your past generations and clear mm -hmm. it from the future generations that are already here you know mm -hmm. this isn't your nobody is stuck yeah. with anything mm -hmm. You know, your, your mind is literally a powerful tool and yeah. the life, the, your life is like clay that <laughs> yeah. you can just mold with the tool of your mind. It, yeah. it really is amazing. And it's not, you know, it takes effort. You have to be aware of things and that's, yeah. that's, that's the key is the awareness, but yeah. And you have to believe that it's possible. Yes. Absolutely. You know, that's like, until you have that, that grain of, you know, tiny bit of faith that, Hmm maybe I can do this, you know, like, that's the biggest thing. Because if you, if you're stuck in that mindset that you're never going to change, your daddy's never going to change, you know, your family's never going to change, they're never going to change. Yeah. And that's it's, the, it's, just the sad truth. It's the circle back to manifestation. Yep. You're in exactly. that negative cycle. And what you speak yep. is, you know, um, okay. So I am not really good at like memorizing Bible verses, but generally speaking, there's one about the power of your tongue, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. about what you speak will be. I mean, th there's actually several, you know, yeah. um, asking you will receive mm -hmm. be careful with your tongue, whatever, all of those, like 
that's not that's not fake. That's a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, literally yeah. real. You know, it's yeah. not, it's not just a concept. It's not just some words floating out in space. Like that is a real thing. When you speak something, it has power. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually reminds me, there's a thing about, okay, let me just maybe blow somebody's mind. You <laughs> um, write out a word. And sometimes in school, we would take these tests and the teacher would say a word and you would have to write it down. And that was called spelling, mm -hmm. like a magic spell, because you are speaking. That's why it's called spelling. Mm -hmm. You are speaking spells. You yeah. are speaking magic. Like that's yeah. legit, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it, it's not, it's not an accident that things mm -hmm. are that way. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. Anyways. Yes. <laughs> It's, All right, we should yeah. probably wrap it up. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah. It has been uh, awesome chatting with you. Thank you so much. Um, no problem. If you're cool with it, I would like to link your um, Horses After Babies group. Yeah. And mm -hmm. also your guide. About yeah. The, I just keep pointing up. Like, everybody knows what I'm talking about. It's up there. It will be <laughs> oh, up yeah. there. Oh, yeah. 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 I'll send you the links and you can, when you go back in, you can throw them in there for sure. Awesome. And that's the nice thing about the guide. It's under 10 bucks. You know, yeah, I wanted to make American, it accessible. If you're yes. American, it's a mere $7. <laughs> yeah. That's the other thing. Yeah. It's kind of a win-win-win for everybody, I think. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Well, I will disconnect from our live here. So thank you everybody for joining us tonight. I'm like looking at my phone now. Um, cause that's where your comments are. So, um, and I didn't see any questions come in just Marta being a rock star, um, putting in some contributing points here. And oh, there. So, thanks. Awesome. Marta. Uh, um, so awesome. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed our time with Leanne tonight and I'm sure that this will not be the last time we hear from her. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This was a blast. Yeah. Awesome. And actually I'm just going to click end. So well, I'll see you later. <laughs> Sounds good. All, All right. right. Take care. Yeah, you too. Bye.